Hi there, this is Jenny from the Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. Today I want to tell you a story about an amazing woman named Ann Lauer. She's a fabric designer and also a dear friend. She likes to give back to the community and she has a great story to tell us. First I want to tell you a little bit about Ann. Ann moved to Helena, Montana in 2004. She was looking for a quilt shop that would service all of her quilting and creative needs. She met my mom at the Sewing Palace and she then ventured into teaching classes on quilting and Bargello quilts. She then started designing Bargello patterns. This was one of her first ones inspired by the Montana landscape. She took those Bargellos and turned them into wall hangings, large quilts, table runners, and placemats. She started going to quilt market and was approached to start designing fabric. Her first fabric was Poppy Panache. She realized that quilters wanted border prints, small prints, toss prints, and large prints. So she designed Poppy Panache. Then she started with Catitude. Catitude was very popular, so it became Catitude 1, Catitude 2, and then Catitude Christmas. When Anne was designing fabric, she kept in mind that quilters wanted squares, blocks, directional prints, border prints, and all of the like. So she worked on designing lots of fabrics that would provide those services. These are just some of her fabrics. This is Peacock Flourish, again, Poppy Panache, Dog Gonnet, and Horse and Around. Horse and Around was so popular that she also did a unicorn collection. Here's the unicorn collection in her afternoon delight pattern. One of the other patterns that she designed was walkabout. Walkabout is a great pattern for cutting large prints and putting them in the center. Check out our YouTube station to learn more about transferring photos on fabric and using walkabout. Her newest fabric collection is called Hooked on Fish. Hooked on Fish again has a block, border prints, toss prints, and lots of great textures. There's the sea creatures, the flourish, and the bubbles. I want to congratulate Anne on her journey, but next I want you to learn about Anne's story when she visited Africa and learned that quilting is not only here in Helena, but it's worldwide. And she shared her story and has a great thing to share with us. When my husband Ron and I arrived in Uganda, Africa last year on September 4th to begin our three-week Africa safari, I had no idea I'd be teaching quilters to make my walkabout pattern the very next day. That's exactly what happened and it was a profound experience. The women we met at Ride for a Woman used treadle sewing machines, charcoal powered irons, warped cutting boards, and cracked and broken rulers to create quilts to sell to tourists. This nonprofit organization is funded through the sales of items that women make and through donations. This allows the women to be paid and receive a free lunch on the days they work so they can support their families. Because of the lack of tourism during, during COVID, the organization is in a dire situation. We are committed to help finance them through a GoFundMe campaign. We arrived in Bwindi, Uganda to visit the impenetrable uh, Rainforest Guerrilla Refuge. Bwindi is a small village with drop jaw poverty, no running water and little electricity. The people in the village realize that they, it's, their subsistence relies on the tourists who come to see gorillas, and therefore they and the gorillas benefit from the relationship. Women carry supplies on their heads and walk everywhere they go, in flip-flops or often barefooted. There are almost no vehicles. This woman came up to our vehicle because the driver stopped knowing that she's got food that she would like to sell. And so he bought some bananas from her just to help her out. But the, you can see that they've got this fabric wrapped around the top of their heads, and that helps keep whatever they're carrying le uh, level. That afternoon, we were taken to our first afternoon. We were taken to Ride for a Woman, who was which was developed in 2009 by Evelyn Habasa to help abused women, those with children and no homes, and generally women in terrible situations. They began by renting and then servicing bicycles that they rented to tourists. Thus, the name Ride for a Woman. Then they added basket weaving. You can see them sitting on the floor here and some in chairs, um, sewing to make items to sell. Then a few years later, they added basket weaving 
and a woman from Australia showed them how to make basic quilts. After an introduction to their organization, we were shown items for sale, such as aprons, shirts, and other clothing, a variety of um, quilts, bags, placemats, table runners, baskets, the, the this amazing amount of items and how beautifully they were done. I commented on how nice the quilts were and mentioned that I designed quilts and quilt fabric. I said this completely offhandedly. I wasn't even sure Evelyn would know what that even meant. But she immediately asked me for color and design ideas. The African prints are large-scale prints, very bright and very colorful. After talking a bit, she asked if I'd return the next day. So after our uh, several hour gorilla trek, the driver dropped Ron and me off at the facility. For gorilla trekking, we wore drab colored clothing, no white nor bright colors. I look really drab next to their colorful clothes, as you'll see as we go through these pictures. All the quilts were made from very large squares and rectangles, so I had decided overnight that I'd show them how to make half square triangle. So <laughs> Evelyn just sent me this picture uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. She found my original drawing scribbled on a piece of paper to show them what how you position half square triangle blocks to get the block that goes in the walkabout quilt. I had no glasses. I, we'd been dropped off after our trek, so I didn't have my glasses, nor did I have a dozen pairs that I had brought to donate. Evelyn brought me a box that had old prescription glasses that were so strong. I, I could only look through one of them, one pair, for like a minute or two before it made me dizzy. Some were scratched, some were broken, they were in terrible shape. So the next day, I brought the dozen pairs that I had bought and donated them to, uh, to uh, Evelyn. She showed me later this picture that came, she texted after we were gone, of the women trying on the glasses to see which ones might work for them. You can see those big turquoise tags. So those indicate the magnification. So they're trying to see out which ones work. So later then, even after that, so recently people in the village have realized that she's got glasses. So they're showing up just saying, may we get a pair of glasses? And of course, what I sent were long gone. Um, a 90 year old man came and wanted a pair that were 300 magnification. Um, I had only at that point taken, you know, I'd only brought 200 magnification. So, but what I was curious about is how the heck did he get there? On foot? By motorcycle? Good grief. So the tools the women were using were in terrible shape. Rulers were broken, rotary, colors, rotary cutter blades dull, and the mats were worn and warped. We had problems with sewing machines with dull needles. So first I looked through their fabrics to decide what would work for a walkabout quilt, and I was looking for something that would be solid to give some contrast to the, to the bright, loud prints. And they brought me this green and also kind of that brownie color and a cream, but I very soon realized that those both had some other, those fabrics had some other um, fiber in them, so it just didn't work to go with the cotton prints. Here we are with my showing them how to pin together the, the pieces to make the triangle block. Now Ron had come with me and he was just going to take pictures that day for fun. We had no idea that the pictures we were taking were going to be used later to try to make people understand and how much help these women need. But look at that ruler. I mean, these weren't staged and the mat is so worn and warped, you can barely see the lines. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just amazing what they're doing. So here we're, Evelyn is showing them how to do a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, they hadn't worried about a quarter inch seam allowance when they were just putting great big squares and rectangles together. Um, she had to be called away often because every time somebody comes into the organization, whether it's one person or 20, they give the whole presentation of why, we're, why they're there, what they need, what they have for sale, and how they're helping abused women. So these women would just be then with me talking to them, and they understand English fairly well. Uh, they learn it in primary school, but a lot of these women hadn't been to school, um, or they're using basic English to co communicate. That's very different from draw a line, diagonally cross a square, then stitch quarter inch on each side of the drawn line. So as I was explaining this, uh, you know, everybody's got masks on, so 
it's hard to also see expressions. And every now and then somebody would pick it up and take it to a sewing machine because she got it. And the others were kind of looking blankly. But then once they saw the woman who had taken it and sewn it, then they got it. So then we had lots of people sewing. Here we are trying to sew the first block together, and you can see how gathered that fabric is because the needle on the sewing machine was so dull. So we moved to a different machine, thank goodness, that had a, a needle, and then there were several other uh, sewing machines that worked for that well. And then they used the charcoal iron to, to uh, iron the block. Um, I, I would see them, whoever was doing the ironing sometimes, just let, leaving the iron on the fabric as she's looking around or getting distracted with other things. And I thought, oh my gosh, is that going to burn? Well, nope, it never got that hot. So after several hours, I think it was about three hours, they had enough blocks that we could lay it out and see what the walkabout was gonna, going to start to look like. And they were so excited. They had never looked at a quilt pattern. They'd never read instructions. They'd never seen diagrams. And to figure out how to do these half square triangles that are dark and light, how you position them, and then get that together to make that block. They would bring them over to the table, move them around, turn them around, and finally get that. And it was, oh, look at this, you know. so. And also in this back picture, it shows up in quite a few of them. Those are Ron's and my water bottles that the tour company gave us. And I thought, oh, good Lord, I'd have moved them out of the way if we'd known we were going to be using this. Um, anyway, so then that later that day, um, they do quilt as you go. So it's flip and sew. And when I came back the second day, they were putting the borders on this quilt. And Evelyn said, I'm going to bring that to the, um, your lodge tonight so that you can see it finished. And I thought... Oh man, it, it was an absolute downpour late that afternoon and I thought she's never going to make it, but she did. She's all bundled up and look how excited she is. <laughs> they were just so thrilled. So we are committed to helping these women because there was nearly no tourism due to COVID in 2020 last year and it's even continuing into this year. They have almost no income. We found out that Evelyn told the women in early December she was going to have to lay them off. They were emotional because they count on this meager income to support their families. And they also hope to get just enough money to be able to make some special food item. So here is the, they are working on quilts. <clears throat> this is actually after we left. So it's a larger quilt, larger walkabout. They, they have mats down on the floor, then the batting, then the backing. And so they're assembling them, quilt as you go. So she's holding this up so that the weight of it doesn't pull it off the treadle machine. And then they lay it out again, as you saw the charcoal iron, then they press the borders and then they keep adding it until they get it finished. You know, there's the charcoal iron. So you can see how they're using that with a batting and they're sitting on the floor. And then we've got them doing the border. And then we, she've got some other, she sent other pictures. This is queen size. How exciting is that? So that's the finished queen quilt. And here's the back of it. The fabric was just gorgeous. And then they did, she sent some pictures of some other walkabout quilts that they had put together. So um, anyway, so when she told me that they were going to have to lay the women off and they weren't going to have, you know, they wouldn't even have money to make a special food item, Ron and I immediately decided we would wire Evelyn money. She is always upbeat. She never asks for anything, but she was overwhelmed with emotion when we asked her how was the best way to send the money. And then a week later, we decided to set up a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for the organization. So due to that, they were able to continue to work through the rest of the year and they, uh, Evelyn was able to put together some food for lunch, for, I mean, for gifts. So here's the group. She sent this picture of them. They all, they all got together and said, thank you, on and Roan. <laughs> it was so cute. Um, and then she sent me pictures in the last, we used WhatsApp. So we're able to text photos and then talk every three weeks or so. So then she sent pictures of them putting together the food items. So what these women received for a gift was a little meat, rice, cooking oil, a bag of fresh onions, salt, sugar, soap, and maize flour. Imagine being so thrilled for these, this basic um, food items. So then the, the women laid them out in, in groups of one of each of the items so that each woman would have that combination. And then they stood behind their... Um, food items and said, Merry Christmas. <laughs> they had to practice it a couple times and then uh, put them in bags to take home. And then after that, they did some of their native dances for joy. Uh, it's just it's so expiring. So 
we have them with the drums there. You see there's some of the some of their sons, the boys were there also. They want to work. Every morning, a dozen or more of them walk about a mile carrying a variety of drums and native costumes for native dances. And they perform these at the Gorilla Refuge. So all trekkers for that day have to go to this refuge center to hear about what the rules are and responsibility for, you, for viewing mountain gorillas. So these dances require lots of jumping. And these women are wearing thin, flat-soled shoes and jumping on concrete surfaces. They're not, they're not young kids. They're middle-aged women. Imagine that. And so they go through, oh, three or four dances that are, you know, a couple of minutes each or so, and then they've got a moderator who tells what each dance means. And they've got their drums, they're singing, making a variety of some wonderful sounds as they dance. So Ride for a Woman was able to set up a water filtration system for because of donors a few years ago. So now the women can walk to the Ride for a Woman organization facility to get water, rather than walking several miles further. They carry five gallon containers of water on their heads and imagine what the condition of their spines would be. About three months ago, Evelyn set up a program called Hope for a Girl Child. She and other counselors are suggesting ideas that they hope will give girls 12 to 20 years old something positive to focus on and a direction for their lives. Many girls that do not have the funds to attend school end up working in the fields, digging all day long, and see no hope for a change in their lives, how their lives could improve. So consequently, they resort to, quote, standing along the road or working at night. Her, Evelyn's first gathering had 54 girls, the second 78, and the most recent 174. At which point she said to the gals, don't ask anybody else yet. We've got to be able to handle the number of girls we have here. So she's hoping to continue that program this year. Recently she started a program hoping to give families in the Bewendy area one goat. At about six months, the goat can be bred. Then the family must donate one of the usual two kids back to ride for a woman. After that, there are no other responsibility and the goats become the property of the family to provide them financial security. A goat costs $80, and so far, Ride for a Woman has distributed 48 goats to families. Evelyn's hoping to provide all 300 families with one goat. 86 children in the area do not have parents or in, are in situations where they have no funds for primary school, which costs $300 to, $15, I mean, $300 to $500 per year. Evelyn has found sponsors for these children, but recently 16 of the sponsors said that they don't have the funds to continue to support the child. Evelyn has worked out an arrangement with the school so the children can remain in school until another sponsor can be found. And Ride for a Woman has begun sewing the required school uniforms. Brewer Quilting and Sewing Supplies in Aurora, Illinois has generously donated a large box of new rulers, rotary blades, sewing machine needles, cutting mats, and lots more that we are arranging to send to Ride for a Woman. And we've added 55 glasses, 55 pairs of reading glasses with four at a magnification of 300. It's unusual to meet not only the organizer but many of the beneficiaries of a charity. And we know firsthand that all the money we raise goes directly to the organization and is used correctly. If you feel that you can donate to help these women and families, go to our GoFundMe site. $80 will buy one goat, $100 will buy the fabric to make one quilt, but no contribution is too small because every dollar makes a difference. Thank you, Anne, for sharing this wonderful story and this great cause with all of us. Thank you to the sponsors that have donated products and financial services. If you'd like to find out more about the GoFundMe site, check out the description of this video. Have a great day.